Hey guys, welcome. We are talking all things about angle measure in this lesson today. So let's take a look. We're going to be talking about the different types of names of particular angles, what it means for um, points to be on the interior exterior of angles, and how to classify specific angles. Okay, um, something else that we need to make sure that we know is we need to be able to also be able to measure these angles. If you have the worksheet, I'm going to show you after the fact what the angle measures of A, B, and C are, and angle CDG, FDG, and CDF. Um, and that's when we get to the classification tab. So if you have a protractor and you'll be able to measure them along with me, that's great. If not, just simply follow along. Okay. So the first thing we need to know is we need to know what an angle is. So an angle is formed by two non-collinear rays. So we previously learned that collinear means on the same line. So two non-collinear rays means that we're talking about two rays that don't make a straight line. So if you have two rays that don't make a straight line, they may look like this, they could look like this, they could look like this, but if they were collinear, it would look like this, which is just a straight line across. An array has an endpoint and an arrow. So array is not a line segment. Remember, a segment has two endpoints. A line has two arrows, but an array has one of each, an endpoint and an arrow. And an angle has a common endpoint called a vertex. So where those two rays intersect each other is that vertex. So this is what array looks like. Okay, or it can be the opposite direction, it does not matter. And then an angle is constructed out of two of those rays, and where they meet is called the vertex. Okay, This angle here can be named in four different ways. So based on this diagram, I could name this angle in four different ways, and no matter how I name it, we'll all know we're talking about that angle right there. So the first angle would be if I just called it angle 2. Now I want you to know that when you see a number here inside of the angle, and it doesn't have the degree symbol, it usually represents the angle as a number. So I can call it angle number two. So I have this angle symbol and then a two. I can also call it angle B. Now the important thing is when you're naming a triangle based on an angle, it's always named by its vertex. So B is the vertex of this angle, so that's why I can call it angle B. So I can call this angle angle two, I can call it angle B, or I can call it by the three points that I see that make up these rays. So I've got ray BA and ray BC. But when I name an angle, I need to name it so it's an endpoint on a ray, or sorry, excuse me, a point on a ray, the vertex, and then another point on the other ray. So I could name this angle A, B, C. I can also name this angle C, B, A. Notice that the vertex is always in the center. So I would not be able to call it, and I'm just going to sketch over here on the side, angle ACB. Because if I say angle CB, yes, those are the three points on here, but ACB would actually be this, ACB. And that would actually be this angle here. And we don't want that angle. We want the angle that is right here. So it's ABC or C, B, A. Next, interior points are on the inside of a triangle. So if, I'm sorry, an angle. So if I have this angle here, angle A, B, C, you're gonna be able to see that G and D are on the interior of this angle, okay? Point E is actually a point that's directly on the line of the angle, and F and H are definitely not within the interior. So interior is going to mean that where you see this angle kind of closing in a bit, okay, like a swinging door, the path of the door, anything in, that, in those points in that range would be in the interior. So points G and D. Whereas exterior, if points are on the exterior of an angle, they're not within this kind of door hinge. Imagine this is a wall and this is a door. They're not within the hinge, they're on the outside. So points F and H would be on the exterior. If this is where my angle is, then these are on the interior. And any points that would not be within that angle measure are here. And again, just like in the previous example, E would not be in the exterior. Yes, it's not here, but it's actually just on the line. If I was to extend this ray, 
for my point, through that point rather, E would be directly on the line of that ray. Classification. Now you've been talking about acute right triangles and obtuse triangles since third grade. So this shouldn't feel like anything brand new, but an acute angle is an angle that is has a measure somewhere between zero and 90 degrees. It's not gonna ever be equal to zero because you can't have an angle of zero. It's not gonna ever be equal to 90 because then that's gonna be the next one, the right angle. And that's pretty much it. So an acute angle is always has a measure between zero and 90. And for example, 40 could be this acute angle. A right triangle, we know we denote with the little square in the corner to show that's 90 degrees. So a right angle is always equal to exactly 90. And an obtuse angle is an angle that is always greater than 90 and less than 180. So it can't be equal to 90. It's got to be greater than it because if it was greater, it would be right. And it can't be equal to 180 because 180 degrees is going to make a straight line. And so an example would be 130 degrees. An angle bisector. So the definition of an angle bisector is it divides an angle into two congruent halves. So here it says if ray DG, so let's take a look, DG, if DG is an angle bisector to angle CDF, then that means that this big angle is bisected, and that would mean that angle CDG is congruent to angle FDG. When you have an angle bisector, it simply means you're taking this angle and you're cutting it into two halves, okay? So then this angle is congruent to this angle here. And you can see I just marked them off. What I also then can say is, okay, well, if these are then congruent to each other, then their measures are equal. And if their measures are equal, I can say that this smaller angle, the measure of CDG, this angle here, is actually half the measure of the entire angle, CDF, right? So if I cut anything into half, then one of those halves is equal to half of the whole, which is what this is saying here. The measure of CDG is equal to half of the measure of angle CDF, the entire value. I can also say that the measure of FDG, so the other angle that became one of the halves after being bisected, is equal to half of the entire amount. Something else I could say, instead of talking about half, I could say double. So I could say two times the measure of CDG is equal to the measure of angle CDF. Um, any of those would work. Now, if you have this worksheet and you're able to measure some of the angles, I would say to you to pause right now. Um, and then here are what the angles of those measures were, just so that you could check to see if you were able to measure them correctly. Okay. Last part of this. So I have this diagram here. Um, Rays FA and ref, ray FE are non-collinear. I'm sorry, they are collinear, so they create a perfect straight line. My apologies. And here it says they're opposite rays. So that's another way to say that, if they are collinear or if they are opposite, because opposite's going to mean that they're going exactly in opposite directions, where if one's going east and one's going west, then it's going to be a perfect straight line. If I had opposite rays and they were north and south, and that's also going to be a perfect straight line. Now it says here that FB, right, FB bisects angle AFC. So FB bisects angle AFC. So what does that tell us? That tells us that this angle here is congruent to this angle here. It says ray FD bisects angle CFE. So if FD is a bisector as well, then it's saying that this angle is congruent to this angle. Okay. Now I have some basically just algebra problems that we're going to take a look at. It says if the measure of angle AFB, okay, so this angle here is equal to 3x plus 4, And the measure of BFC is equal to 5x minus 7. 
find X and the measure of AFC. So find X. So let's see, if they are congruent to each other, these angles, and that means their measures are equal to each other. So that would mean that I would be able to set these two expressions equal to each other to solve for X. So 3X plus 4, oops. So 3X plus 4 is equal to 5X minus 7. We would do our basic algebra, subtract 3X on both sides, add 7, and we end up getting that X is equal to 5.5. So that answers the first part. We always got to be careful, guys. Usually there's more than one question, one part of the question, rather. Now it's saying find the measure of angle AFC. So AFC is the entire big angle. So I have a couple ways I could do this. I could do 3x plus 4 plus 5x minus 7, add these expressions up, and substitute the 5.5 in for x. Since I know that these are equal to each other, I could do 2 times the measure of one of the angles. So 2 times 3x plus 4, or 2 times 5x minus 7, and they would all get me the same result. So there's, that's actually what I did. I did 2 times one of the half angles. Then I would substitute in my 5.5. I would do all of my algebra work here, and I am, end up getting the measure of that angle is 41. Okay, so now this next one. The measure of angle CFE is 8x minus 10. So I'm going to zoom my screen out just a little bit here. Okay, so the measure of CFE. So let me start fresh. I can erase what I just did, so I start fresh on this next problem. CFE, so this entire angle here is 8x minus 10. And I think it's always a good idea to really like draw things out when you're working on problems. And then it says DFE is 3x plus 2. Find x and the measure of CFD. Well, now let's remember that this angle here was congruent to this angle here because they were bisected. So there's a couple ways I can look at this. I know that if this is 3x plus 2, then this also has a measure of 3x plus 2. And that those together should be equal to 8x minus 10. I also could say that 8x minus 10 is equal to 2 times 3x plus 2. Or I could even say that 3x plus 2 is equal to half of 8x minus 10. I chose to do that 8x minus 10 is equal to 2 times 3x plus 2, so twice it. So this entire angle is worth double that half angle. Do your solving for x, just basic algebra work, and we get x equals 7. Now to find the measure of CFD, the second part of this, what we have to remember is if this is 3x plus 2, then this is also 3x plus 2. Okay, since those angles are equal to each other, I can go ahead, substitute in my x for just 3x plus 2, and I end up getting 23. I hope this video was helpful for you. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.